You can start. Okay. Namaskar everyone from India. Myself, Dr. Rashmi Tyagi, and it is my privilege that I am sharing my knowledge with all the great educators of this blue planet that is the earth. And we are going to discuss on a very, you know, important topic for 21st century, which is life skills. Actually, lots of transformations have taken place after pandemic in the education and the new policies, they have come up for this century. Therefore, it is very important that we should know about them and then we should integrate with the curriculum for the students. So life skills means they are the life management skills. And we say that our professional life is very important. And that is why the students, they come to the school and they learn about the different subjects. All of you know that mathematics, science, literature, and social studies, and so on. But in the past, you know, you can say uh, before pandemic, we were not talking so much about the life skills. Because if the professional life is important, then our personal life is also important and social life is also important only knowing about the scholastic subjects is not enough because it is 21st century and the new skills have come up like collaboration, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, and then media literacy, digital literacy, information literacy, and Due to the digitalization of education, you know, these literacy like information technology and robotics and uh, machine learning has also come into the education. So these are the 21st century skills. And then we have got these life skills, which I have told you just now, which is useful for the, you know, these young generation and it was useful for the past generation also. But unfortunately, we were not impressing upon the life skills in the past decades and the past centuries. But today, it has taken the center stage in the education. And the, these life skills, you know, they are integrated with the curriculum. And then, you know, we have to ready the children for the future. For the future means in their professional lives, they have to have the teamwork. They should know that how we are going to just communicate with the team and collaborate with the team as well as with the other people and other platforms around them so that this way the communication skills which are one of the life skills it is very important and at the same time the social skills are important and the child which we are teaching or the youngsters whom we are preparing for the future they have to mix in the society and for interacting in the society, they have to have social skills that how they can have, uh, you know, these kind of uh, good relations 
with the people and then how they are communicating with them and how the values and attitudes they are just using while interacting in the society. So the life skills are actually required more than the scholastic skills. And then when we talk of life skills, we talk of the emotional skills also. We talk of social skills. We talk of emotional skills. So when the student, he goes for a corporate job and then he has to have emotional skills more because if something happens, you know, accident takes place or some problem arises in his workplace, then he has to solve the problem and he should have the confidence and he should have that type of problem solving attitude and he should be able to think critically. So thinking skills are very important. And for the future of the youngsters, we have to teach them these life skills. And for the professional lives, social lives, and personal lives. And this is what we can do in the schools because for the students, for the children, the school is either a second home or a first home also for some youngsters. So we have to, you know, just teach them that they can adjust in the society, they can do best in their professional lives and they can do, you know, in their personal life also uh, something which a balance. They should have a balance in their personal lives because in India, we feel that if they are emotionally balanced, then they can have a good personal lives in the sense their uh, adjustment in their families, adjustment in the joint families, as well as adjustment in their own family, married life. And we want that they should have a successful married life. So for that, the personal lives also, the life skills are required and that, you know, we teach them in the schools because they are with us with the educators and with the teachers, you know, at their adolescence stage. So in that stage, we can just tell them that how to adjust, you know, with the opposite sex, you know, the girls and boys, they should know how to adjust. And then the, when the girls in India, they are going to a new home and there she has to adjust with the other people like, uh, you know, uh, the in-laws, and uh, cousins and all that, they should know these skills also. And that is the skills which is to be given to these youngsters so that we can have an empowered society. So this is how I'm telling you that life skills are important for the professional lives, social lives, and personal lives. And that is why we have to integrate share. We have to integrate them into our education. And then, as I'm telling you, their emotional quotient is required more than their intelligence quotient. Because if they have to solve a problem, then they have to just, you know, use their knowledge there. And knowledge of what? Life skills, not the knowledge of a subject. Because what they, if they have... Uh, done so well in solving the Pythagoras theorem. But when they are solving some problem in the professional lives or their personal lives, then what is required? The, they, they require, you know, these life skills and the confidence and all these things. So that is important. And then actually life skills are keys to success in your all round, round development. and all the life around you. And then the, I will just tell you that the life skills, the 10 core life skills are 
self awareness empathy critical thinking creative thinking decision making problem solving effective communication interpersonal relationships coping with stress coping with emotions so a person should have self awareness we have to guide the children that they should have you know awareness about their uh, about themselves that what are their weaknesses and what are their strengths and how they can use it in their own lives so self awareness is very important and we have to integrate with the curriculum and we can really do it by just telling them that you should be confident about what you are doing when you are dealing with your friends and that time also and when you are just sharing a platform or you are giving a presentation or when you are interacting in the society you should have your self confidence and that is the self awareness and then second we have got empathy actually empathy is a very good quality and it is the quality where the people just can understand what is the plight of others sorrows and happiness so we have to be in the others shoes so that we can understand their problems sympathy is feeling for someone but empathy involves feeling with them and that means that we have to just understand them and that is why we should have empathy so how we can teach empathy to the students in the class we have to give them situations that some inclusiveness in the class because as per national education policy 2020 inclusiveness is important that means we are having all types of you know children in the class whether they are dyslexic whether they are having autism whether they are physically handicapped or whatever so that way if they will understand that what is their problem how they are feeling so then we can know about empathy and empathy is very important today and then creative thinking as i told you that thinking is very important it is cognitive because when we try to understand something we try to do some research or we try to do some creativity then we do the creative thinking and our scientists you know they have done the creative thinking for science and that is why we have got atomic energy today so this creative thinking we have to teach our students so regardless of whether you view yourself as a creative type or not you can learn some useful skills and techniques which will enable you to tap into that creative right brain thinking and bring a new perspective to innovation problem solving and managing change so that is why the creative thinking is very important and for creative thinking for some innovation first you have an idea in your mind you know uh, the atomic energy or atom bomb for making i will not talk of atom bomb i'll talk of good uses of atomic energy first of all a thought came to the mind of a person of the scientist and now we know so much about this atomic energy good uses so the idea that is most important and that comes as a thought in your mind that is why the thinking skills are important and then we just process the idea and then we develop it we have a vision we have an inspiration so all this contribute to our critical thinking so that way the critical thinking is very important and for and self awareness is also very important and this is very important and we have to just have certain things about self awareness like self concept and 
you know, self-consciousness, self-image, and all these things. So self-awareness is also very important in this. And then we should have a critical thinking. And critical thinking is also very important. And for teaching the critical thinking to the students, for we should give them some situations and we should give them some difficult situations in life. And uh, I usually give this example, which was uh, in the Discovery Channel and uh, it was uh, published in Reader's Digest also. And that was that uh, an aeroplane, it crash land into a forest. Everybody was, you know, uh, alive. Then how they reached home. So then many people give, come with different ideas and you can brainstorm such questions in the class. Then the mind of the student, their thinking becomes critically uh, important and creative also. So then uh, you all of you might have seen that uh, episode, maybe in the Discovery Channel, that they reached home by following a stream. Because, you know, on both sides of the stream, mostly the people reside. And even the animals, they come there for water, as water is very important for life. This is how they followed that stream. And then they reached a place where many people were residing and then they contacted you know, the place where they were residing and they could reach home. So that way, you know, critical thinking, we have to give situations to the students. For empathy also, we have to give situations to them that uh, suppose you are traveling in a bus and then you get down before your destination and later on you come to know that that bus has met with an accident and in that case what are your feelings how will you react so the first reaction is that okay i'm alive and then after that the people say that we will go to the accident site and we will help the injured people and we will contact their relatives and we will try to make the relatives comfortable and if there is any emotional crisis with the relatives or with the accident victims, we should try to give them, you know, some soothing touch. So that way, you know, the empathy situations may be given. So for teaching the children in the class, the critical thinking, the empathy, we can give them some situations. And then they, as I'm telling you from the very beginning that life skills are very important for the student, especially among the young adolescent. And we try to promote positive attitudes because the positivity is a very important life skill, which is just present with an individual. It is an individual life skill that one should have a positive attitude. And then one very important Life skill is the decision-making. And when we talk of decision-making and we talk of analysis, and then we talk of Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is also very important because it tells us that the hops, the higher order thinking skills, we should know about analyzing a situation and then about taking a judgment, about taking a decision and then the creativity. So taking a decision is important. If there are three you know, ways you are going somewhere and then you see left, right and straight. So it, it is very important that you take the right decision. So for taking the right decision, the teachers will help the students when they're adolescent or they are young that they should have a good decision making skill. So decision making skill is also a life skill. And I told you communication abilities and healthy decision making, preventing negative and high risk behaviors, promoting greater sociability and teaching anger control. 
I had gone to one school, you know, two, three days back for a training. And there I had seen that they have written a big board was there where they have told that this is an anger free school. So nobody is going to, uh, you know, be angry in that school. And if we teach the student not to get angry, then there will not be con conflicts. And if the conflicts are there, they can easily solve the conflicts. So this is important that we should have, you know, anger management, anger control, and we should teach our students. So when we are teaching them high mathematics, you know, and uh, high level science, then we should also teach them how to control the anger. And then they should have a good self-esteem and self-confidence because that is very important. When they go to the big corporate houses and then they have to handle you know, people from all over the world and from the different platforms, then they should have a good self-esteem and self-confidence. Confidence is very important. And you know, for improving the academic performance, they should have confidence and then these uh, life skills should be well designed and they should be well delivered. It is very important. And we, the teachers and the educators, we should try to do this with the students and they should become more responsible and they should have, you know, mental, uh, uh, you know, mentally healthy, not only physically healthy, but mental health is also important and that can be contributed by these life skills and resilience is also one of the life skills suppose somebody you know faces some very uh, bad things in life then he has to come back to the normalcy as we have done during pandemic so much problems were there and this uh, corona was there and uh, many people were sick with corona. Many people have lost their uh, family members and uh, just so many things. But then today they have come back with the resilience. So the resilience is important. And now things are getting well, not only getting well, but they are going to be the best. Right, right now as all of us, you know, we are together and the world has come closer. So. It is a resilience that after the pandemic, all of us are just looking forward for the 21st century, not only in education, but other uh, streams of life also. So that way we have to integrate these life skills, self-awareness and all these things in our lives and the decision making is also so important. And creative thinking, I told you, is important. And problem solving is important. And we have to train these students that in the wider process of problem solving, decision making, they should choose between solutions to a problem. Decisions can be made through either an intuitive or reasoned process or a combination of the two. So these things, the teachers can, can only tell them about. So the problem solving is really very important. And then the Bloom's taxonomy, as I have told you. And then, you know, they should have uh, confidence and we should also teach them that how they can manage the stress. I remember one incident when in Thailand, some groups of students, they were, uh, they lost their way. And uh, then they could not find their, uh, you know, way back. Then, you know, after one week's time, they were found sitting peacefully in, in the cave. And the reason was that their coach, who was uh, coaching them for the life skills and for yoga and all that, they told him to be quiet. And uh, to just wait for the help and not getting stressed and not uh, just uh, thinking of negativity, thinking of 
positivity. So that is how we have to just handle these things. And I told you about effective communications also. They are fundamental to success in many aspects of life, which is the key interpersonal skill. It is an interpersonal skill, you know, communication between, you know, it can be interpersonal or it can be intrapersonal. And intrapersonal means that we can com communicate with ourselves also, you know, that we should know our uh, uh, strengths and the weakness, and we should have, uh, you know, these uh, things about ourselves, that if we are facing some problems, then we are not getting, you know, stressed, and we are uh, having that much confidence, we'll come out of that problem. So, and then inter means that with different people. So some children, they are very social, and in the class also, they just, you know, interact well with others. And even they come to the teacher and they compliment the teacher. The teacher take this rose flower and you look so pretty. So that way they start communicating, you know, with uh, the people around from the very beginning. So this is what we have to teach the student. These are the interpersonal skills. And then we should know that straight talk. What is the straight talk? The negative communication typically results when we fail to express our feelings. We ignore the other person's feeling. Our attitude is not respectful. So this kind of negative communication, we should tell the student, it is not going to help them anywhere. On the contrary, it will do bad to them. So if you will tell them these things by some role plays in the class, you can call the students on the stage and then you can ask them that two you know uh, parties they are having a ne negative communication and uh, they are not able to express their feelings they are fighting with each other so uh, and then you just have another role play where the positive communication is there and then positive communication is more likely when we express our feelings and thoughts directly. We acknowledge the other person's feelings. Our attitude is respectful and caring. So that way, you know, we should have a straight talk that no negative communication. We should have a positive communication and that we can teach the children by the, you know, role plays in a different way. One, positive communication uh, party doing the role play and one negative communication and then they can compare the two. Now, interpersonal relationships are very important everywhere, you know, in your personal lives, professional lives and society. So there should be strong, deep or close associations or acquaintance between two or more people that may range in duration from brief to enduring. This association may be based on inference, love, solidarity, regular business interactions, or some other type of social commitments. So these things are very important, you know, in business interactions, you know, social commitments and long-term associations. And today we are having, you know, long distance associations with all of you. So these are going to become the interpersonal for all of us, the educators all over the globe, we are interacting together. And uh, that's why it is so important. The friend be, being friendship friendly, the friendship is so important. And then interpersonal relationships, we should know that we should learn about them. And then we should improve our interpersonal relation ship skills and we should try to maintain it because maintaining something is not easy. So learning and then improving and then maintaining. So that kind of interpersonal relationship and that is the life skills. So the, now you might have understood by now that life skills are so very important, you know, as much important as getting the knowledge from the syllabus, from the books, from the science, from maths, astrology, and whatnot. So 
even a doctor, you know, after uh, being a master's in surgery, he should have, you know, the uh, interpersonal uh, things, you know, interpersonal uh, life skills. And then, you know, coping with the stress, this is also a life skills. We need it many times in our lives. Coping with stress is the process by which a person consciously attempts to master, minimize or tolerate stressors and problems in life. Also spending conscious effort and energy to solve personal and interpersonal problems and conflicts. Because sometimes the people, they are sad maybe, and maybe they are not getting success in their professional lives. But then if you just uh, lose your patience and lose your confidence, then how you are going to just, uh, you know, come back to a successful professional life. And as we have heard about so many leaders like Abraham Lincoln, he failed so many times, but ultimately he reached his goal and he became the president of such a big country. So failing, how to accept your failures, that is also very important. And we have to learn from failures. So that is uh, life skills, that how we can cope with the negative feelings after having some tragedy or failure in life. So that we have to tell our students and we can teach them by telling them the stories, you know, storytelling has become a very good pedagogy. It has, it has become very important pedagogy and we have to teach the children these types of stories and through the storytelling, you can really teach them life skills. And we have got so many stories from which our students can, can learn, you know, the big epics. And then in India, we have got Panch Tantra. In the Panch Tantra, many stories are given from where, you know, students can learn. And uh, uh, then I will say that these, uh, you know, life skills are being taught today. Like we are talking that we should teach our children in the classrooms. But in the past, what was happening? These life skills were not taught, uh, were not taught in the classrooms. Then how we were getting it? We were getting it through our grandparents. So that was the Dada Dadi ki kahaniya means grandparents used to tell them stories. And, you know, in the combined families, the students were learning, you know, how to adjust and uh, how to have the life skills, you know, with each other, how to respect your elders and how to love uh, the uh, people who are younger to you. So uh, these are all, you know, life skills. And then we should know that how to have, and then we are going to teach them in the class these life skills and then not having the stress, as I told you. So how you can manage stress? You know, you go into the nature. You know, when a teacher, she comes back from her school after a day's work, then I asked many teachers, I interviewed them. I asked them that how you just de-stress yourself after a hard day's work. And then they told me that some of them, they listen to the music. Some of them prepare a good dish and some of them go to take a walk. And even some of them were doing the paintings. They were doing the writing. So, and maybe they were just uh, going for some, uh, you know, exercises or for some games like badminton and then table tennis and all that. So they are the big de-stressing activities. And then say your prayers. See prayers, when we come uh, near the almighty and we are communicating with the God, then we always express ourselves that we are passing through all these problems. Please help us, dear God. We always say that. So I think prayers are very important. Some people are going to the churches. Some people are going to the temples. 
and then some people are just going to the nature and then they are communicating with the you know the creator the god so that way also you can de-stress yourself and then yoga and yoga has come all over the world and it originated uh, mainly from india and uh, uh, it is a kind of a meditation where you should have positive thoughts in your mind and sometimes thoughtlessness also and then you do some yoga exercises so i think it is a great uh, you know de-stress de-stressing technique and we should teach our children all these things and we can have sessions so this is a kind of a life skill zone to just control your emotions and be peaceful and then you should have friends you know uh, friends are very important in life and uh, we just interact with friends we express our feelings we get together we enjoy together so uh, having friends and uh, with them uh, just uh, interacting positively that is important and then do your exercises that i have told you the exercises also de-stress yourself only you should know that what kind of exercise or what kind of de-stressing technique you are using for your age appropriate your you know body appropriate that you should know and uh, then uh, manage the time see time management is very important and uh, the time is the most uh, uh, you know just uh, important entity in this world because you cannot buy time you cannot uh, you know get more time whatever is given to you so we have to respect time and we should not waste the time we have to manage the time and then i told you the painting and the artistic endeavor like writing a poetry the singing listening to the music the dancing and maybe performing arts or maybe dramatics as there are so many things you know these art things which can de stress the people and the reading books you know the books you know they are so important to us now during this uh, uh, digital world uh, we are mostly having so many you know platforms from where we get the knowledge the you know from the google and uh, from the whatsapp and uh, from so many places you know platforms and we are mostly having the mobiles in the hands and that is not a good thing and the books they are kept inside our almirahs and then from the almirahs they are just asking the question when i am going to come out of my this uh, captivity in the cupboard and when are you going to open me and when you are going to just read me so the books are calling you the 21st century learners so just still you know you can tell your children that they should read the books so i think uh, uh, we should never uh, you know just uh, lose the books you know in our lives and then think positive that i have told you that thinking positive is very important coping with emotions it is uh, you know very much required in our lives avoidance of the emotional distress will distract from the negative feelings associated with the stressor emotions focused coping is well suited for stressors that seem uncontrollable so we have to teach our children the uh, emotional quotient and uh, because i give this example i usually give this example that emotional quotient is more important like uh, i give the example again of this uh, airlines you know uh, these companies so when they select the people for their company they always say no scholastic is okay your intelligence question is okay you got 99% in the result card but now let us know what is your emotional quotient what kind of activities you have done 
in your college, whether it is a medical college or an engineering colleges, because I have interacted with the professors in the universities. Then they told me that nowadays we are doing these life skills. We are integrating also with the subjects, you know, they are teaching them the metallurgical engineering, the, you know, computer engineering or, uh, you know, mechanical engineering or whatever, or the doctors also, whatever they are learning. But the professors and their uh, curriculum is giving them space that they are learning the life skills and the multitasking is very important when you become uh, a CEO or maybe an important position in the corporate houses, then multitasking is very important. You have to just uh, uh, you know, interact with the different type of people and do the different things. Like you are in the marketing, you are in the communication, and you are in the selling, you are in the buying, and you are with the HR, how you are inter interacting with the HR, or maybe some crisis management. So that way multitasking has become very important. So that is, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, emotional quotient that we are teaching, teaching not only at the school level, but the higher studies level also, and uh, some uh, international accords, uh, they are just giving the guidance to the universities all over the world that now you integrate the life skills and tell us that what kind of uh, other things other than scholastic activities the student has done what course scholastic activities he has done has he done some uh, handled some big program in the school some big event he has managed in this in the college so that kind of activities are nothing but the life skills and as in an airline company if the plane is hijacked then how the ceo is going to interact whether he's having the emotional balance or not. Emotional balance is very important at a crisis. And for that, if we give them this kind of, you know, just uh, training at the school level, at the university level, that how they are going to cope up with the emotions in the professional lives, in the personal lives, and in the social lives, then they can be a wonderful human being and the good citizen of the world a global citizen. So that emotion focused coping is well suited for stressors that seem uncontrollable. So that way we have to get rid of disgust, fear, sadness, anger. So these things, how we are going to manage and how we should have a joyful environment around us, that is also a skill, you know, some people are cracking jokes and they are making the environment very light by their sheer presence. And that way they solve the problem. So this is how we can handle things. So that way I have just told you today that how you can have the life skills, you know. So life skills have become very important for, the education arena because we are just educating the world, the future generations in our classrooms. So it is the duty of the teachers that the young generation, we have to instill the life skills for them. And uh, I hope that uh, I tried my best to just talk of these life skills and then I want to thank the IIU that they have just given me this opportunity to interact with the international, uh, you know, just uh, audience. And uh, so I should just uh, uh, talk about that how this IIU is helping us. So that is very important for us and we should have interactions with the IIU and uh, it is an international internship university and it is a global university is a leading virtual education system because you know it is 
a metaverse. This is the fifth revolution that virtual things have become very important today in the 21st century. So the virtual university of its own kind, that is the IIU. And I'm proud to be associated with IIU because I am just, uh, you know, with all of you virtually, and it might be virtually, but our hearts are so close together and we are able to express ourselves. And it is a global band confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide thing, you know, this university. And uh, it is a well reputed in delivering innovative programs Globally, it is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the young learners on the globe. So it is going to be very important 21st century, you know, help to all of us. And we should just attach ourselves to this great university by Shri Piyush Pandit. And then in short span of time, you know, it has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents. Wow, that's great. Under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit, sir, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades and providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. So I feel myself fortunate that I am just attached to this first virtual program, you know, in our country, the first virtual uh, university. And now I just uh, thank everyone here for a wonderful audience. And then I give this platform to uh, Ermi, and Ermi, please take this platform. And it was wonderful.